The market has arrived. What do I mean by that? Stay tuned, I'll tell you more. Welcome to another edition of Mike's Market Update. My name is Mike Rennick. I am your host for this video. I said the market has arrived. What do I mean? Let's take a look at the numbers. This might be a little bit longer video because there's some important things to consider. But we went through a time where it was, the market was way slanted towards sellers. I, can, I call it the crazy 18 months where everything was selling at very high prices. Well, we've shifted back to where I believe we're going to stay. It's a normal market. It's a lot more balanced not quite into a, a, an even seller's buyer's market, but it's moving that way. So let's take a look at the numbers. This is Sarasota Manatee County. This is for what we call the August results. It's data effective through July 31st. So when we look at the first chart, when we look year over year, we see sales continue to fall. That's the whole story isn't year over year. So I'm gonna go through these fast and get into the monthly charts. Sales are down, pendings are down, price is up, but that's over a year ago. Days on the market are down. In months of inventory are going up. We've had two areas of focus. Not enough listings, so that's the amount of months of inventory. The other focus is what's going to happen to price. So let's take a look at the next slide here. Let's take a look at the um, units that have been sold. That's a dark green. We see for about the last three or four months they're trending down. We're seeing that on a national basis. Sales are falling. Are they falling off the cliff? No, but they're falling back to a more normalized market. When we look at the red line, um, the pendant, we see that it's kind of a, I'll use a technical term, it's squiggly. It's up and down a little bit, so pending or future sales. But let's look at the light green bars. Those bar, that bar says the amount of units for sale, and it's up tremendously. It's been climbing for about four straight months, and it went way over the top for the last month. That's solving one of the issues right there. It's been a supply side amount of listings. It's getting very healthy here. That's making it more fair for both buyers and sellers. I'll share more in a minute. Did we do that because of price though? Has price been impacted? When we look at the next slide, we see for about the last four or five months, price is remaining constant. It nudged down a little bit last month, but not nothing significant to say that's a trend. We'll keep watching this, but the national data for the most part supports that prices are not falling, but sales are. Let's take a look and we look at days on the market relatively constant um, when we look at the uh, orange bars there properties are still selling relatively fast not as crazy as it was but still relatively fast when we look at the next chart <clears throat> months of inventory way up through the sky huge amount in terms of 2.3 months three is kind of the break-even point when it gets over three it's a more balanced market so technically this still says sellers but a big change inventory is up prices are still holding. That's the state of the current market. Let's go into the national charts. Keeping Current Matters provides these. I have their permission to share. Let's talk about right now what's happening in the current housing market on a national basis, because ultimately that's going to impact Florida. We look at mor uh, mortgage rates, still fluctuating up and down a little bit. Where is it going to land? We'll talk about that in a second. But mortgage rates are staying in the low fives generally. We see some blips up, some blips down a little bit. Let's take a look at the definition of a recession. And I've covered this before, but I think it's important. The National Bureau of Economic Research defines recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the economy lasting more than a few months. Normally we measure that in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail um, sales. When we go and we look at the next chart, generally they say it's two quarters of contraction, and we've had that with the numbers. But when we see this chart here, even though in the past that's defined a recession, maybe not now. And let me share why I feel that way. Unemployment's at record lows. Inflation is starting to come down a little bit, not where we want it, but it's starting to move in the right direction. So this is still, in most cases, a healthy economy. So let's ask the question, is there a recession around the corner? Let's look at some experts here. And right now they're forecasting about 49% of the economists that they've uh, interviewed are suggesting we will see something in the next 12 months. But again, looking at the numbers, we're not about to fall off the cliff. Is housing going to be impacted by a recession? Well, I've shown this chart many times. And when we look over the last six recession, 
four of them had no impact to the housing market. We all remember 2008 where we drove the recession with overinflated mortgages, high home equity debt, things like that. Homes started to uh, not appreciate, so the economy fell off a cliff. The experts are suggesting that's not going to happen going forward, and we're actually seeing signs of that on the national basis. Looking at the next chart, a recession means falling mortgage rates. I've covered this, and when we look back, where rates have fallen during the typical recession, so that's what they're forecasting. The mortgage rates we see today will fall. Let's look at a quote here from the Fortune. They say, over the past five recessions, mortgage rates have fallen an average of 1.8% from the peak seen during the recession to the trough. And in many cases, they continue to fall after the fact as it takes some time to turn things around, even when the recession is technically over. So why won't the housing market crash? I agree with the points being made on the next slides. First of all, there's still not enough homes for sale. If you take a look at this chart, we're relatively low compared to what we've seen during the expansion periods of time. And lending standards on the next chart are still under control. We are not giving away mortgages like we did back in the 2008 timeframe. When we look at foreclosure activity, it is way down. We jump into the forbearance program. Folks that went through the forbearance program for their mortgages are coming out. 36% were paid in full. 45% of the people were able to work out um, payment plans. There's about 18% still in trouble, but overall still a good news story. Let's look and see what uh, Rick Sharga has to say. And I quote, foreclosure activity across the United States continues its slow, steady climb back to pre-pandemic levels in the first half of 2022, while overall foreclosure activity is still running significantly below averages. The dramatic increase in foreclosure starts suggests that we may be back to normal levels in early 2023. Again, no matter what metric we look at, it paints a strong picture going forward. So what's going to happen for the rest of 2022? When we look at mortgage rates projections um, for uh, Q4, they're saying that the uh, average of the experts that they've looked at is about 5.3%. Let's take a look at CNBC and I quote, there could be a potential silver, silver lining for the market. He added a stabilizing mortgage rates and rising inventory may bring some buyers back to the market during the second half. Let's look at home um, pricing forecast for 2022. Everybody is suggesting prices will continue to rise for the balance of this year. Let's look at Mark Zandi, chief economist of Moody's, says, and I quote, I don't think national housing prices will decline in a meaningful way, but there will be some price declines across the country. Jumping quickly to the total home sales forecast, we see that right now, um, Everyone has revised it down a little bit, but still significantly strong numbers. So what does this all mean? No matter what metric we look at, now it still suggests now's a good time to buy or sell. Home prices will continue to rise, according to the experts. Pricing that we have today in most areas of the country will not fall backwards. This is the new normal. The rate of increase will get much more reasonable than it had, but there's nothing in there that says it will fall back. Is a recession coming? Most people say yes but also they say there'll be no impact or negligible impact to the housing market. So no matter how we look at this thing, it's a win-win. So how can this be a win for sellers when we're moving away from a seller's dominated market? Easy, there's going to be more buyers coming back and buyers will have time to make an intelligent decision. It won't be, let's look at a house and write a, an offer while we're still in the driveway. So sellers will still get a very good price for their home. As I said, the experts are suggesting no pullback buyers will have more opportunities more buyers will come back when we're in a balanced market everybody wins and that's what's forecasted going forward in my heart i truly believe that's what we're going to see we will continue to watch the numbers as you noticed i don't do the weekly updates anymore because the shifts aren't as significant we've pretty much arrived at where i think we're going to stay barring some international uh, event that we don't see on the forecast right now so I appreciate you watching this video. It's about staying informed so we can make the right decisions for us. If I could be of any help, my name is Mike Rennick. My personal cell is 941-400-8735. Thanks for watching.